Gotham Knights, the finale, the one where it finally died. But they really thought they were getting a season two. They set it all up. We had Rachel Ghoul's assassins firing laser pistols. And Two-Face finally appeared, looking like someone grated Parmesan cheese on his face. You hate the Gotham Knights. The funniest part of that scene is they had to dub over all of his lines because he clearly can't talk in that mask. Sure, it might work for one scene, but what are you going to do about it for all of season two? Forward planning, not their strong point. Although it is Castiel's. Gotham Knight's corpse wasn't even cold before Misha Collins started shopping around for his next job. He's still holding out hope for a supernatural revival. We can do some kind of resurrection for the show. Maybe some kind of limited revival run series that might resurrect my career after this mess. He may be tweeting out messages about how I love Gotham Knights because we were really pushing the boundaries of what was allowed on television. But it won't stop the fact that Gotham Knights was cancelled because towards the end of the run, it was pulling in under 300,000 viewers. And so even being CW's cheapest show, simply couldn't save it. But we start at Gotham PD as the Insufferable League have been arrested. How many ways do you want me to tell you the same thing? Well, I'm just trying to get it straight. That'll be a first for this show. That's not what Castiel was bragging about on Instagram, love. You were framed for killing Bruce Wayne by the same people who then framed you for killing Cressida Clark. Start reciting all of the stuff they've been framed by. And it's deliberately written in the most confused using way possible. So much so, I had to rewind it three times just to understand what they were saying. Worked for the people who framed you. You've been framed for killing the people who framed you? Why would you phrase it like that? So you got framed by the framers who framed you for the framing of the framers who framed you for the framing? This is more confusing than reading an article about Ezra Miller. Did he commit his crime solo or in a gang? We'll never know. <laughs> That's exactly what the Court of Owls does. What, Ezra's part of the Court of Owls? I never saw that one coming. Who's left to frame you now that everyone is dead? Some of the framers, I suppose. Technically, some of them can't die. It's a space rock. My favorite part about this is they're telling her the story of the series, and she's like, I'm not gonna believe that. That's stupid. Yes. Yes, it is. But you get to the writer of the finale, he looks back, he's like, is that what you wrote? Is that what I'm gonna have to finish? Because I tell you what, if you put that out the door, this show's finished. Never has a face more summed up the attitude of the audience. But they tell them everything about the magic space brock that brings people back from the dead, Talons, the League of Assassins, and the fact that the person who set them up and murdered all of them is someone's mom. Oh, and there is a bit where one of them actually stitches up Turner for a genuine murder. Sword-wielding killing machine. That can never die. Well, not until Turner cut off his head, but he was totally justified. This is supposed to be a hard and criminal criminal doesn't even know what to do in interviews. Oh yeah, by the way, my mate did murder somebody. <laughs> You just tell him, oh, it's totally justified. And like, yeah, sure, I believe you. I believe you. Do you feel you were justified killing Gotham's elite because you believe they were part of some secret cabal? To be fair, they were part of some secret cabal. You found them sitting around a table with candles all around them as they were wearing owl masks <laughs> and owl watches at a meeting of the Court of Owls. <laughs> I think it's safe to say they were part of a secret cabal. Whether they were justified in being killed or not is a different question than whether they were actually part of a secret cabal. They weren't gathering around to watch the 40 or something. We didn't kill them. Then who did? My mother. That's not how it works. When someone's like, well, who did that? You're supposed to go, your mom, not my mom. Doesn't work if you're just insulting your own parentage. But as they're being interviewed, we zoom out to the talons. Oh, well, you can't see it in this, in the fight, I'm pretty sure we've got a diverse array of murderous psychopaths. So that's a nice bonus. Women can be murderous assassins too. That's the equal opportunity I like to see in 2023. That's the last time I'll ever see those title sequences. Today is a good day to die. Worf was right, just only about TV shows. Over at Wayne Tower now on the 13th floor. Because for a secret empty floor that nobody knows about, it has a lot of traffic flowing through it. We have Castiel getting a bag pulled off his head. And later on in the episode, you'll wish we could put it back on. You're gonna make me beg, aren't you? Well, if that's the kind of thing you're into, love, I'm not gonna comment on it. What can I say? Castiel must be a big boy. Trust me, I tried to avoid this way for years. Wait, why do you have a metal ring on the back of your neck? It's like, I want jewellery, but I don't want to see it at any point. <laughs> Doesn't even go around the front, look. What's the point of that? I'm not even sure if he's wearing it correct. Surely it'd be the other way round. What's the point of showing off jewellery to people behind you? Call me old-fashioned, but I think I deserve to know that you could have fought in the Civil War. On the plus side, probably got a great pension set up for herself. Swigs and roundabouts. I just like that Castiel's main problem with a murderous psychopath who's taken over a city is her age. Not being a murderous psychopath. <laughs> He says, prolong life is a gift and one I'm willing to offer to you. All you have to do is start over with me. No more fake marriages. To be fair, I still don't know why she had a fake marriage before. <laughs> 
Plus, you had a kid together. How fake was it? You're not the Rebecca that I fell in love with. She's exactly the Rebecca you fell in love with. She hasn't changed. She's been the same for hundreds of years. <laughs> I feel after that long, you would be definitely set in your ways. She says, no, the problem is you. You're not the Harvey that fell in love with me. Except not yet. But we can fix that. We just gotta get the other guy out. You can't have me, so the crazy one's gonna be your rebound? I mean, I feel like that's kind of standard procedure, isn't it? <laughs> you split up with someone, dye your hair, try and take over the world with a disassociative identity disorder patient. Gotta be honest, for Gotham, that's kind of tame. But he refuses to turn into the fun version of him. And so we bring in his daughter, Duella. Now she thinks Cassiel hates her because she did try and murder him in cold blood. To be honest, it's fair enough. He really should, and I'm not actually sure why he doesn't. The whole, you're my daughter, I love you, does have limits, and I feel like those limits are when she tries to shoot you in the heart. At that point, I think we can call the whole thing off. And so she's got a plan to force him into turning. We're gonna strap her to a bomb, and I'm only gonna let you defuse it when your better half turns up. She even gave him an hour to talk it over. The episode's only 43 minutes. I think an hour is rather generous. Your father, however, is good and immoral and just. I don't know about that one, love. You should see what he tries to claim at Comic-Cons. I know he said he got carried away, but trying to griff that probably doesn't come under the definition of moral. Over at the police station now, we've got the caffeine-addicted cop. Confronted with Robin's mother, I want to talk to her. It's been two hours. Unfortunately, she didn't bring him any coffee, and so he doesn't help her. Juice of the bean, love. Have you not seen the previous episodes? She's 15. Well, congratulations. You raised the youngest mass murderer in Gotham history. And that's going some when you're in Gotham. You kind of feel like the Joker was fired out of the birth canal, taking out the nurses on the way past. But Turner is about to receive some revelations. Yes, this series does hate Batman. In fact, by the end of this episode, they completely eradicate his legacy from the city. But for now, they do have to confront that I'm not going to kill you rule. Well, slightly. She says, you don't remember me, do you? But killing is in your blood. I was the lead detective investigating the death of your parents. You couldn't solve that one either, huh? Probably the first good line he's had out of the entire series. You don't remember me, we met before on that other case that I failed at. I mean, when you're on his side of the table, hearing that's probably a good thing. Just your investigator starts telling you how incompetent they are. But she says, I knew Bruce Wayne. I knew him as Batman. We worked together. Then she admits to criminal activity herself, because they're talking about the case involving Batman and his parents. Did you bury the case to protect him? I buried it to protect an eight-year-old boy. Pretty sure that's illegal. Cases exist to document what happened. You can't just go setting fire to them because of an uncomfortable truth for an eight-year-old. But that's when she tells him, your parents were assassins. They were sent to kill Batman and Batman defended himself. I mean, we still keep smashing into that Batman doesn't kill rule. So we haven't actually explained how Batman didn't break his no kill rule and yet two assassins that came to kill him died. Kind of feels like we should have done that. Your parents were murderers, Turner. Assassins. Sure as the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, they've murdered this show. They cleaned office buildings. Well, other people needed to clean office buildings after they've worked in them. They were incredible painters and decorators as long as you wanted red. But she says their last assignment was to kill Batman and shows him these as proof. As a passport, love. Even if it's a fake passport with a different identity, it's still not proof you're an assassin. I feel like we're making a bit of a leap here. I mean, it's true. It's just not very good detective work. Oh, look at this. They've got a Swiss passport. I bet they're assassins. <laughs> but they work for this guy, an international criminal. Nobody wants to say the name Rachel Ghoul for some reason. Name Henri Descartes. Instead, they got themselves killed. That's the only information we have about how they died. What do you say they got themselves- what did they do? Fall off a building? Oh, they were trying to assassinate Batman and just slipped off a banana peel. So you're kind of describing it. But they get a forensics report back. The gang all have incendiary residue on them. I mean, firstly, they've only been there two hours. That's the most efficient forensics team in the world. Definitely got Barry Allen working at that one. But also, how many people get arrested for beheading someone and get tested for explosive residue? I don't think this is a standard test. Traces of nitroglycerin were found on your jacket when you were booked. How? Do you go around testing every piece of clothing for nitroglycerin? But they realize it's from the barrels on one of the 13th floors. It does mean only three of them should have it on them. And Turner wasn't one of them, so why he was getting shown the report, I have no idea. <laughs> Luckily, we've put the entire gang into one cell so they can all talk about it and work it out among themselves. If you've got a gang of possible assassins in custody, always put them together to enable teamwork. Dry out the police handbook. But after telling her that you've got to trust us, we can solve this, the lights go out. Owls hunt better in the dark. Why do we keep saying? this. Oh, I'm on the 13th floor because owls take somebody else's nest. We're gonna knock out the lights in a building because owls hunt better in the dark. They're not owls, they're people. Just because owls can do something doesn't mean the 
that it's better for them to do it. Criminal organizations should not be run on the strategy of a bird. They also lay eggs, so you gotta get your leader to do that as well. Get her to cough up a couple of food pellets just to get her in the mood. But even this line is pointless. Because, oh yeah, they're in the dark now. It doesn't stay that way. <laughs> Which means they knocked out the lights specifically for this line. They were so proud of it. I want the entire building on lockdown. Copy that. Bring him back up generators online now. Yeah, that's as long as darkness lasts. Because he flicks a switch on the backup generators and all the lights come back on. Owls hunt bear in the dark. For the five seconds that the lights were out anyway. And it gets worse because this is the guy that's just turned on the backup generators and there's the talons. So they could take him out and then just turn them back off again. Owls hunt better in the dark. No. No, they leave the lights on because owls hunt better in the dark. And I suppose they're just so powerful they don't want the extra advantage. Wouldn't be fair. Either way, the police panic because the talons just start cutting their way through the police department. It's all done on CCTV. Well, all the police are upstairs watching the CCTV, not doing anything. I need a unit to motorpool now! No one's giving him coffee yet, so he's not going down there himself. Also, you're watching them take out a unit and you're like, yeah, you could just one unit go down, please. Two guys, that'll be enough. Cheers. What about all of you? Maybe it's just me, but if your police station's getting invaded by people, you should all go to help and stop them. Officer down! I repeat! Yeah, there's gonna be a lot more if you only send another unit down there. Why aren't you going down there? What's the situation? The situation is you should be down there stopping the assassins killing everybody. We got multiple intruders just cutting their way through the bomb squad. Why are you allowing the bomb squad to fight them? They cut wires, not hit people in the face. They're making their way up now. Why don't you make your way down, you lazy arse? But they're all just happy to stand there staring at the cameras watching everybody die until one of the talons realizes he's getting watched and takes out the camera with a throwing knife. What the hell are those things? That doesn't make any sense. They're clearly people. They're obviously humans in a suit. And you're like, what are those things? Dunno just comes across a little bit judgmental to me, love. Over with Juella and there's 46 minutes left. Castiel's trying to bond about how horrible her mum is and she doesn't want to talk about it. If I had known you existed and if you had had an actual father figure, none of this would have happened. The show temporarily has a good message. You know, fathers are important and if she had a father, she wouldn't have turned into a massive criminal. That's the only good thing you're gonna get though because he kind of forgets all about that in about five seconds. All of that hatred that had to go into you pulling that trigger, I deserved every last bit of that. No, he didn't. That's his very next sentence. Well, if I had known you existed, I deserved every last bit of that. I didn't know you existed. If I did, I would have made everything right. And you wouldn't have turned out the way you have. By the way, how you've turned out and you shooting me, that's my fault, not yours. No, because you didn't know she existed. And if you did, you would have done it differently. And her not understanding that and trying to murder you is only her fault. Because it was her actions, which makes her responsible for it. I survived so that I could have a chance to make it up to you. No, I think you survived because the writers know nothing about metals and think a coin can stop a bullet. <laughs> but he says, I have a second chance at life and I'm gonna pay you back. I'm gonna get us out of this mess, no matter what it takes. So she starts crying. It's understandable. Imagine going from The Joker's My Dad to Castiel's. The Joker's far more well-liked at Comic-Cons. Well, there's a thumbnail. Someone cares about you now, okay? I mean, Turner did before and he's like, no, it's just me now, love. Now I'm your dad. Turner can piss off. But back at the police station and this cop is so caffeinated, he's decided to take charge. Everyone else has only had 38 cups of coffee. They can't compete. So the lift goes off and they all point their guns at it, only for a head to roll through the door. Gotta be honest, at that point, I'd just start firing. In this case, though, we're all just gonna look gormless as we stare at it for a bit and let them walk through the door without firing. <laughs> Shoot him! Now, admittedly, they do shoot him after that. Doesn't do anything. They can't decide what Electrum does because for some people, they take the wounds, collapse, and then it heals them afterwards. But when it comes to the Talons, they could just stand there and take it. Then we have Mrs. Talon over here. <laughs> All right, love, can you just jump on this table and look threatening for me, please? Cheers. I don't even know how you'd convince her to be an assassin. Well, I saw it in my horoscope. Mars is entering Jupiter, and so I've got to go on a murderous rampage. Tell you, Mystic Meg never saw that one coming. So the Talons rampage across the room, just slaughtering everybody. It's not even a fair fight. No one stands a chance. <laughs> For some reason, nobody's really firing guns anymore. Look, I know you fired a lot and you did nothing, but you would just assume naturally that that was body armor or something. It'd still be more reasonable to keep fighting rather than just stand there and take it. But while they're in the cell, they can hear all the radios going off. I don't know why. You wouldn't think that police radios would be pumped into the cells, but it is here. <laughs> It's not the best time to be locked in a cell with the insufferable league. Seriously, if you're gonna go out, the last people you want to be locked into a room with are these. But the police woman comes in and she's like, okay, how do we deal with these people? Cause you're all horrible murderers, you'll probably know. <laughs> 
How do we stop these things? I don't know why you keep calling them things. They're obviously people. Nobody thinks they're robots or crocodiles, but they're just amazed that there's multiple talons and work out that the boss lady has been pretty busy with the space rock. We need weapon, the ones who impounded from the Batcave. Now, I saw what they impounded from the Batcave, despite the fact the Batcave only had a computer in it, which they didn't take. But we saw the boxes of the stuff they had, and it was largely 15 million different keyboards. What makes you think that you can stop them? Well, you think that they can stop them. Well, you came into the cell in the first place to ask them, how can they stop them? That was 15 seconds ago, we probably forgot that. But Turner's like, oh, we already took out one, I beheaded one, remember? That guy told you all about me murdering one in cold blood. Because we're the Gotham Knights. Right, another half an hour anyway. So in they come, ready to take on all the talons at once. Turner is as agile as ever. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just gonna ignore you now. I'm gonna take a passing swing that I could have easily turned down into your face as you ducked it. But I'm just gonna completely ignore you as you run past me. But what follows is the entire gang complete with bat weaponry. Some of them, anyway. Allocation of resources among these people definitely isn't fair. Because Turner, Turner's just got a battered sword. Whereas Captain Esport over here just has a stick. I know it's not nunchucks, but it is only one step higher. We get a quick shot of the caffeinated cop just unloading his shotgun at point blank range into a Talon. Well, at least he thinks he's hitting the Talon because he does close his eyes every time he pulls the trigger. So he has no idea whether he missed, which judging the fact that he empties his shotgun into him means he probably did miss, let's be honest. It's all the caffeine, he's shaking like a Back to the Future star. So Talon grabs him, smashes him into a desk, and is about to give him the Wolverine treatment until in comes someone to save him. It's the fake cop, complete with electric batons, who saves the day by electrocuting his elbow. Blondie's arrived and somehow has managed to learn to fight in about three weeks. She didn't know at first, and now she can defeat centuries-old professional assassins. Now it doesn't make any sense to me either. Although her stick does have a new trick. <laughs> It gets ever so slightly longer when she wants it to. Look, she's been in multiple love triangles over the course of the series. I can understand how she developed that talent. So we go through all the people fighting with their new weaponry. Robin's mother's amazed. Oh, she can actually fight people. I don't know how she thought she was stopping crime before. Having a polite word with them, I suppose. But they all split off. Each person's fighting their own talent and not getting involved with everyone else. No one's 2v1ing, it's very polite. That is, until this one comes in and saves the day, which is weird. Remember, she's the character that has done basically everything for the entire series. She has every role, every skill, and is absolutely perfect. And they gave her this scene as well. I don't know what it is about the character, but whoever makes the show adores her. Everybody! Hit the so she's got some kind of electro blaster or something. It's just one shots all the talons. It literally just one shots everyone. We went through a massive fight scene of everyone individually. If only we'd just got the Mary Sue to come along earlier. Could have saved a lot of time. But at that moment, a talon appears behind a mom and stabs her. Although Robin quickly explodes him out of a window. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to care about this, but all she's done is complain about Robin the entire series and lock her in a room. This kind of scene only works if you actually like the character in the first place, but for that you would have had to have got the mum to have done something which the audience actually liked. So the rest of the crew run over to see what she's screaming about. Don't help her, they just kind of stand there staring at her. Bearing in mind that this guy over here has some electrum in his tooth, so yes, he would lose his immortality temporarily, but he could heal her and then stick it back in his tooth again. No one thinks about that. So the mum and Robin go off to hospital while the the rest of the gang take action. They're in the mayor's skyscraper going to check out the nitroglycerine barrels. While saying it can't be a coincidence that the Talon took out the bomb squad. Yes, it was a coincidence. They went to Gotham PD to kill you. It was on the way to you that they met the bomb squad in the loading dock. They didn't know they'd be in there. Why would they be in there? Meanwhile, we got these two looking miserable. So, are you like a thing now? Did you gather that from the misery on their faces? They both look depressed. They're clearly dating. I'd be miserable too if I had to get with her. Uh... Are we a thing? Because it's obvious. If it's obvious, why are you asking? The issue is, they get to the 13th floor, and most of the barrels are gone, except for one, attached to a bomb. And you know the best thing about having a synchronized bomb countdown? We can track the timing involved. So there's 40 minutes left now. But back when Castiel and Juella were talking, there was 46. In six minutes, the Gotham Knights have got out of their cells, got weapons, fought off the Talons, traveled across town to a different skyscraper, and reached the 13th floor, as well as getting their mum to hospital. Barry Allen works for 
Gotham PD confirmed. But it's got booby traps on, so they can't move it or disarm it. And from tracking the cell phone signal, it somehow works out it's attached to seven other phones, which means seven different bombs. Tracing the cell phone's frequencies to their points of origin. Probably the most stupid line in the episode. I'm tracing the cell phone frequency. It's all around you, love. Even if you got the phone tower, it'd only give you a radius. Why didn't you just say, I've turned on their GPS? In phones, there's actually a built-in specific tracking device. We didn't even use it. Of course, eight bombs. One for each of the skyscrapers designed by Alan Wayne. Yep, the head of the Court of Owls, or X-Head, is gonna blow up every single tower, every single 13th floor, to hide all of her tracks. And of course, them all coming down will kill at least tens of thousands of people. But they work out the bombs are all connected. They're all planned to detonate based off one single bomb. The mother bomb. Please tell me it's just nurturing and slightly overbearing. Obsessed with the Aquaman movies. I wish. Of course, the mother bomb is the one that Juella's fiddling with. And I do like that now it's 35 minutes, confirming that everything's happened in the past 10. But Castiel's realizing, I'm gonna have to give her what she wants. I've only just met you and I want you to survive, so I'm willing to sacrifice myself in that end. Hey, hey, what are you doing? I'm phoning back up. Don't, don't, you could blow us up. That's right, super smart Juella makes a phone call on the phone. These things are booby traps, so if they move, they'll detonate, but nobody stopped them fiddling with the different apps. You know, you're about to die, but at least you get to play Candy Crush first. So it goes through to the Insufferable League. Quite frankly, if I'm about to die in half an hour, these are the last people I'd want to be talking to. I mean, talk to them for half an hour, you consider a bomb a lucky way out. I'm strapped to one. How do you think I'm calling you? You're calling me from the bomb's phone? Look, if we're just gonna repeat every line a second time, this show's gonna go on forever. It already feels like it goes on forever. So she takes the gang on what's happening. We're strapped here together. Harvey's here and he's got disassociative identity disorder. Although she puts it slightly differently. There's an evil twin riding shotgun in his brain. Yeah, one who joined the court of owls and started banging the leadership. How much of an evil twin is is if he keeps getting you a promotion? So they come up with a plan. If Juella can disarm her bomb, then all the rest will disarm as well. And yes, we've got to do it over the phone, but we can guide you through it. Oh, bingo! <laughs> Nerds to the rescue! Yeah, that was really easy. I'm sure there's nothing gonna go wrong here. Start by finding the red and purple wires. No, stop! There's Blondie, always ready to crap on your strawberries. We are not doing this again. I should hope so. It was stupid enough the first time you did it. If she starts randomly pulling out wires again, I'm gonna have an aneurysm. But Blondie realizes something at the last second as they're about to wipe out half the city. Apparently the bombs are rigged, so if the mother bomb gets disarmed, then everything else detonates. That doesn't make any sense. I've been saying that for an entire series, Castiel. Never bothered the scriptwriters before. I'm not sure why they're so concerned now. Why would Rebecca tell us how to disarm the bomb? And they say it's so they can have a fall guy. Juella disarms the bomb, blows up everything else, and not only does the head of the court of owls get to cover her tracks, but now somebody is blamed for what she did. There is a problem, and that this is still a 13th floor, which isn't going to be detonated. So if you want to cover up your tracks, you've failed. But as Castiel said, this doesn't make sense, so I'm not sure why I'm trying to make it. But they start panicking because Joel is like, well, if you find us on it, I'll survive. <laughs> yeah, they care that tens of thousands of people will die, but Joella. Eh. Is she Joker's daughter or Castiel's? Robin gets told by her mom, Oh, you're so wonderful. I got to see you in action. And now you've got to go out there and save the city. I don't care. This is the most bizarre storyline. I'm not sure why anyone should care. I'm so sorry that I got you into this. Turns out I'm not the only fighter in this family. What do you mean? You're not a fighter at all. Robin's a fighter. You're a surgeon. If you consider being a surgeon a fighter, I would hate to see how you do a triple heart bypass. Should we fetch the chest separators? No, stand back. I've got this. <laughs> Batman chose well. Well, it's the first time for everything. He's been absolutely crap at everything he's ever done for the rest of the series. At least when he's choosing his replacements, he made a good decision, apparently. Gotham needs his Robin. I'm pretty sure that's meant to be a major moment for the series. Ah, oh, she's got told she can be Robin by her mum. It's always wonderful when superheroes need permission off their parents, isn't it? Really gives you that confidence boost. <laughs> But Castiel comes to the conclusion, the only way out of this is if I change into him. But he's also diabolically clever, and he'll get you out of this. I don't think he realizes that the other guy is him. You're not two different people, he's got your brain. You have to be the same intelligence as him by definition. He's diabolically clever, but I'm a complete moron. But Juella starts, that's not gonna help us anyway, because even if we get the disarm code, Gotham goes kaboom. Castiel has a bit more faith. We won't have to disarm it, because he will find a way to outsmart her little scheme. Plot twist, he doesn't. 
isn't. In fact, for a guy who's described as diabolically clever, he really isn't. It's like describing someone as a genius who then just gets through every problem by punching them in the face. Just not sure how much intelligence it really requires. Fighting crazy with crazy is the literal definition of crazy. Well, that can't be true because that's the circular definition from hell. What's crazy? Well, it's fighting. 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 We get into an infinite recurring loop two words in. Now, as ever, Juella carries the scene and her crazy eyes are doing overtime because she finally breaks that I thought I had the Joker who got killed and then I had nobody. But now I've found you and I don't want to let you go. Despite the fact that last time I met you, I shot you in the heart. <laughs> what can I say? Shooting someone in the heart seems to clear the air dramatically fast in this show. Everyone just forgives each other and then wants to spend the rest of their lives together. So I don't want to lose that. I don't want to lose you. Unfortunately, love, it's not your choice. Because Castiel's already made his mind up and he says, if you believe that, make me a promise. You'll find a way to bring me back. I'm sorry, Castiel, but a season two is beyond even her powers. You could go to the gates of hell yourself and not find anyone who could help you with this one. Oh, Harvey, what mess have you gotten us into this time? Castiel tells Dean he loves him, basically makes Destiel canon. I mean, look, he's evil, but this character is way better. You actually get to see Castiel's face move for once. And he always seems to play characters where he just has to be deadpan the entire time. <laughs> And a laugh like that could only symbolize someone having a mental break. I should know, I've been trying to fend it off while I've been watching this show. <laughs> Back with the gang though, and he's trying to talk Juella down. But trying to convince Juella that she shouldn't save her own life is an uphill battle at best. The question is, can we save it from Juella saving herself? It's just a good job that Juella's up there and not you. Because if we need someone who isn't self-centered, you'd be a lost cause. I mean, we all know what she's gonna do, right? Talk about projection. I know what I'd do in that situation if it was me. But the hackers come up with a plan. Maybe we could reverse engineer the code and make it so that if that bomb goes off, the other ones don't. And I'm like, that's not what reverse engineer means. I think they just heard reverse and didn't know the rest of the definition. Yeah, reverse engineer obviously means do the opposite of, doesn't it? Are we really gonna trade tens of thousands of lives for one? I guess depends who it is, doesn't it? But they don't trust Juella not to save herself, but Turner, Turner's got faith for a particularly weird reason. Didn't think twice about blowing herself up to save me. I love how Hollywood writing is just, you could become a different person whenever you want for any reason, not spontaneously. Dude, she doesn't care about Gotham the way she cares about you. Are, are you saying she can't change? Saying she can't change without having some event happen and that actually changes her, yes. No, people generally change either over a traumatic event or the course of decades. You don't change your entire moral outlook on life in a weekend. And are you willing to bet the whole city on that? I'm willing to bet on her! Tell you what, the dude visits a library once and he's willing to blow up a city. Looks like he takes after his parents after all. This morning I learned that Batman didn't kill my parents, they died because he was defending himself from then. We're still never gonna find out how they died though. <laughs> did he kill them or did something happen where they just like accidentally fell off a roof? My parents were prolific assassins. Monsters who murdered god knows how many people in cold blood. And yet somehow you still managed to come across as more dislikable. <laughs> I mean, it's impressive, really, isn't it? Most people have to try, but in Hollywood, it just comes naturally. So if you're gonna stand there and judge somebody based on where they came from, well, you may as well turn your backs on me, too. They're not judging Juella on where she came from. Firstly, because she's not even Joker's daughter, she's Castiel's. Secondly, they're judging her on her own behavior, which she's shown in this very series. Perfectly acceptable to judge someone for their decisions. Whereas it wouldn't be with you because you've done the opposite. You've tried to help people while your parents were murderers. How do you forget your own plot? That's the main question that I don't understand. I chose my own path. Exactly. You chose your own path. And so did Juella. And she chose a life of crime and getting people hurt and leaving them to die. <sighs> I can't believe I'm about to say this. I vote we trust Duella. You're all gonna die. I thought it was a stupid plan before, but if she agrees with it, you're all- That's the only proof I need that it's the wrong decision. That still doesn't stop all these other bombs from going off. We just need one of them to go off, right? I don't think you'd need one of the bombs to go off. That's currently the plan you have, but saying I need this bomb to go off is- is no. No. But he phones the cop who loves the juice of the bean. It's like, we need you to evacuate Wayne Tower because we're gonna blow it up. And the cops are just like, yeah, fine, whatever. <laughs> What's that? A 15 year old's told me he's gonna blow up a skyscraper. We'll be right on that. Cheers. We need to evacuate the area around Wayne Tower. I'm a little short staffed here. That's his only response. Can you evacuate Wayne Tower? We're gonna blow it up. Well, we're a little short staffed, I'm afraid. <laughs> what are you talking about? No, we're not gonna do that. It's all right, mate. I trust your decision. You wanna blow up a skyscraper? The police will let you do that. We'll even help. I got more baddies in the hospital than I do on duty. Do you know what would happen if I diverted all those resources? Is it going to be worse than blowing up a skyscraper? That's what I wanna know. I know what'll happen if you don't. Yeah. 
You need to trust me. Yeah, just trust this random 15 year old who's gonna blow up a skyscraper. Nobody in the show acts as they would. They only act as the script needs them to. Hey, Rebecca, for a woman who likes me to use my hands, you sure you want to keep me tied up? That's my response. Oh, Castiel, I didn't really need to know that about you. Keep your dirty little mitts over there, would you? But once she knows that the evil guy's back, she puts up the disarm button. Girl strapped to the barrel of nitro. Push that disarm button. And he doesn't care that the entire city's gonna blow up either. And he thinks she shouldn't. You promised me another way out of this. Harvey, he's all talk. I'm the action guy. That's why I'm here. Press the button. And I gotta be honest, I like this character the more he's here. It's a shame that we'll never see him again. This is why you start your series at the good bits. That way, you get to continue showing the good bits. Don't start crap and then try and improve over time. It doesn't work. Stop starting superheroes when they're nothing. So he spends his time trying to convince her that this city's betrayed you. They've given you nothing. They've done nothing for you and you've just had to take everything your entire life you owe them nothing so press the button and she's kind of laying it back she's like Raturna believes in me oh. but she starts playing mind games back you were locked up in Castiel's head and now you're out and what you're gonna be locked up by the court of owls as well you've just traded one prison for another don't you want to be free <laughs> I mean Rebecca March Really? I'm struggling to disagree with that assessment. After all, she doesn't look a day over 205. Her words, not mine. You're just a dog. Oh, don't say that. It's giving me flashbacks to Secret Invasion again. I like dogs. Dogs don't crap on their own carpets. Oh, watching two shows back to back trying to compete on the worst analogies. But she tells him Rebecca will get bored of you just like she got bored with everybody else. Just like she got bored with her last husband. Look what happened to him. You want to be in charge, but instead it'll just be a ticking time bomb. But at that moment, the devil appears. She immediately gets down on her knees, which isn't exactly what I was expecting. Although Harvey, having realized what his life is about to entail, and with him being diabolically intelligent, comes up with one of the smartest plans you've ever seen. It's subtle. It's effective. It's pure genius. Only someone of intense intellect could ever have come up with this. One of us will. I never saw that coming. Oh, bro, 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 bro. I'm diabolically intelligent. Die! <laughs> I don't know, I just think that the average 45 IQ is running strong. So he starts choking her even though she's immortal. Okay, you can very obviously tell in this freeze frame, that's not her. <laughs> It doesn't look anything like uh, even remotely. Wait, why did we need a stun gun? <laughs> we didn't do anything. All we did was spin around. Either way, she yells for help. A guard comes to grab him. Although Castiel takes him out with a spoon. It's okay. He's probably just visited London a few times in his life. It's a tactic for all tourists. The issue is though, as he turns around, she grabs a jar of hydrochloric acid and smashes it on the side of his face. For some reason, it only goes over his face and not her hand. He's screaming in agony and she's fine. So Castiel's like running around screaming, hand on his face, that always helps. I've got hydrochloric acid on my face, so if I put my hand in the hydrochloric acid, that can only make it better. Of course, the guard, not bothered, he smacks him round the face. He's like, a wound, quick, have some salt. So he gets knocked out and goes flying onto a chair before dragging him off to wherever the thousand-year-old leader's next base is. Now, she looks really concerned, but you have to bear in mind, she's only known him for about an hour. <laughs> Before that, she tried to murder him. So her entire attitude has changed in 60 minutes. Frankly, I'm not sure just how serious she can be. <laughs> so we've got an army of police now going to a skyscraper to evacuate it. The Gotham Knights infiltrate it through an air vent. We've got seven minutes left. I'm not gonna do it. You're gonna do it. You don't actually have a reason not to do it. And not doing it goes against your entire character. You have no reason to change apart from, I fell in love with Turner. Did you ever stop to wonder why you're the perfect person to frame? Because she's the one that's been carrying the show on her back for the entire series. Because if this was Turner, he'd have two expressions. One of them you can only detect if you spent the last 100 hours talking about this show. Because one of the gang is so perfect, she'd magically find a way out of it. Oh, by the way, I can teleport. <laughs> she could do anything she puts her mind to. Because the entire city is so ready to believe the worst things about you. That's because the worst things about her were true. She was a criminal that got people killed because she didn't care about them. You can't go, I can't believe they believe this stuff about you when it's true. And do you know why that is? Because it was true. Because they're true. What? I'm pointing out the flaws in your own argument and your own script and you're like, yes. <laughs> You got us there, lad. I preferred when script writers at least tried to excuse their own bad writing. Now they just admit it and are proud. <laughs> 
At least you're on strike, I guess, you know. Be thankful for small mercies. You're not currently destroying any other property. I don't know Duella. Neither do you. I wish I didn't. I wish I'd never known any of you. But oh no, two 15 year olds have turned up to fight the ancient villain. Absolutely no way they should be able to win. But she doesn't bother fighting herself. Two guards run up. You would have thought after a few centuries she would have learned how to fight. But Robin takes out one of them with the tiny little dagger. Like, what is that supposed to do? Do you remember in episode two or three where she lobbed at a guy, it just stuck in his shoulder. He's like, oh. Oh, it's okay though. A few episodes later, she's leveled up her experience tree and now they do more damage. But she takes out one, Turner takes out the other. And I kind of feel like this is cheating if you just pull out a gun on him. This is essentially the Indiana Jones maneuver. But just as he's about to fire, her son comes around and kills her. <laughs> I don't admit, I never saw that coming. He walks up behind her and gives her all of the Electrum in one go. My favorite bit though, is how he brags about it. It's Electrum, Mom. Every last bit of it. I'm sure you know what happens when you get too much of it. You don't have to sound so proud of yourself, mate. You've just murdered your mom. <laughs> Yeah, you know what happens when I give you this poison, don't you? You'd think you'd be a little bit sad. Oh, well, you know, I didn't want to do this, but you left me no other choice. Not going, yeah, you should see what I did to you. You never saw that coming. You could have had the world. He'd need it, because at the moment he can't even get acting lessons. So they're all really upset. I, I don't really know why. She was a villain who's murdered loads of people and was going to kill you. And even as she's dying, she's threatening him. My talents will find you. Turns out the evil runs in the family, I guess. I can't believe it came back for me. Nor can I, to be honest. Your mum sold him to the police. <laughs> and then you left with it. After all those times that I, I ran and screwed you over and you- You're making an excellent argument of why he should be leaving you. Not offended. You probably should be. She tried to get you killed, mate. In fact, I think the normal response is a little bit more than being offended. Oh, you tried to murder me. I'm so offended. Isn't the response? But Harvey's there just slowly roasting. And his hand flickers and he comes about. Before beating up his guard and putting him out of his misery in probably the coolest shot of the entire series. But then Robin finds the Electrum that was meant for Harvey. She's like, oh, I can save my mum with this. This could save my mom's life. It'd be nice to see it finally used for good. I mean, you do have some in you. Actually, given how you bragged about murdering your mom, yeah, it probably wasn't a good use on you, was it? And that was probably a mistake, thinking about it. Back downstairs, we've got Juice of the Bean talking to the fake cop. He's like, oh, forgiving you because you saved my life. They hacked the bomb and defused the other bombs while letting this one detonate. Okay, so when the timer hits zero, the seven other bombs will be neutralized. I do like how they said they reverse engineered the code, but because they heard reverse and think it just means literally reverse, they don't realize if they'd actually actually reverse engineered the code, it means they know what the code is and so could just turn them all off. Instead, we're gonna blow up Wayne Tower. You know, just to completely eradicate anything of Batman's legacy from Gotham. But they're not malicious, they, sw they swear. So they've got five minutes to get out of the tower. But they get alerted by surveillance that the Talons are coming. I don't know what this surveillance is. They're the Talons. For multiple episodes, the story has been they can avoid anything. They had the 13th floor specifically to avoid detection. And now it's like, yeah, we just see him walking around the city. <laughs> so they all go to leave, hoping that the Talons will be in the building when it explodes. But then Turner starts getting sentimental. This is Wayne Tower and his journals. You know, the same ones that I could have taken before or broken into this tower at any point to get. Now, now I suddenly want them for no reason whatsoever. You knew my dad in a way I never will. He's getting so sentimental. We even flash back to the disastrous pilot. So they all go to leave, but he decides to stay and go back upstairs to get the books. There's absolutely no way he'd have the time to go all the way up back upstairs, grab the books and come back down again. It's okay though, because Ty and distance have never meant anything in this show, so magic. So they all escape. He runs in, grabs the journals. He starts stashing them in this bag, which I'm assuming was already there for some reason. So we cut down to 54 seconds. In four minutes, they went down from the 13th floor to the ground floor, then back up to, what, the penthouse? I'm supposed to where Batman's lair would be. To shove all the books in a bag, and he did it in four minutes. I'll tell you what, he's fast. I'll give him that. So then he teleports back down to the ground floor in about three seconds. And it has to be three seconds, because as he's running out, Okay, you Oops. So he collapses on the floor. Yeah, love. Uh, don't fancy yours much. The villain arrives with the talons and she's looking a little bit worse for wear. <laughs> now at this point, I know what you're thinking. He's definitely a goner now. There's no way he's fighting off four talons on his own. She's like, you took my legacy from me, so I'm taking Bruce Wayne's from him. Gotham survives Batman's legacy will live forever. And as the talons move in to wipe him out. Yep, laser rifles. Laser rifles that can one-shot immortal beings. That was handy, wasn't it, really? So then these soldiers appear out of nowhere. They're apparently assassins now with laser rifles. Assets secured, they take him away. All of that apparently happened in a minute, and now they're going to evacuate the building that's about to explode on them in a minute. We'll go through some kind of time-dimensional portal where it slows down whenever it needs to. Because we've got three seconds left. The entire building collapses. 
And little Miss Jokerface is really unhappy about it. <laughs> Maybe you should have stopped him going back for those books, eh? Even they see it from the clock tower, which is pretty magnificent. Must be able to see that building from every place on Earth. Somebody tell me he's okay! I mean, you never gave a crap about him before, love. I don't know why you're starting now. Over in the hospital, Robin shoved the space rock into her mum's face, and she's fine. For some reason, she's not telling her mum what she's done. Her mum's like, there's no way I could have recovered that fast. It's impossible. Doesn't question it further, though. Just mentions it for the script. It takes longer than that to recover from sepsis. At no point goes, so what did you do? I uh, know. Just, I've acknowledged it. Now we're moving on. They talk about the change of the skyline. You know, they started the series by killing Batman. Now they've wiped out Wayne's Tower just to completely eradicate his legacy from the city. They have their names cleared as they're now the heroes that saved the city. This guy gets called over by the juice of the bean. And I just wanted to give you that proper thank you. You're a better fake cop than most real ones. I do find that real cops make terrible fake cops. They just can't manage it. Nobody's worked out why. It's not that it's basically definitionally impossible or anything. Come on. This is weird. They ask about Turner. He says, well, we haven't found Turner, but we did find the limbs of various different talons. So he looks like he put up a fight. It's a shame you didn't find any of those laser rifles, eh? We cut over to Joella's mum. She's got the reward for handing her over to the Court of Owls, but she's got a guest. It's Harvey Dent, completely dubbed because he can't talk in his mask. There's no way you were going to do an entire series two of just dubbing over everything he says, surely. He walks around showing one side before we get to see his gruesome visage. It's no wonder he can't talk in that fake mask attire but he is pissed because it's his daughter and so he goes to kill her but he'll give her a choice this coin saved my life and so we'll see if it saves yours it wasn't good news back in the clock tower they're all crying i remember our times here you know when we were running from the police and desperate duella's in tears i can't believe the only man that's ever actually liked me is gone <laughs> they're discussing what they're gonna do next maybe i should join this school as, as long as i can get some kind of scholarship and do it for free i mean she is the perfect person that can do literally anything on earth is a master bomb diffusal expert can invent things is a perfect engineer a computer hacker thief no money though i know there's one thing that talent and skill doesn't bring it's money I don't know what she's been stealing. Never made a penny from it. <laughs> but Joella's got a plan. You want to go back to your old boring lives? So that's it. Back to your boring little lives. No more Gotham Knights? Yes, actually. There will never be any more Gotham Knights. Maybe those horoscopes were right after all. You hate the Gotham Knights. Look, it's not my fault. I, I don't think I was left with any other choice, love. Also, judging by the ratings, it seems like I wasn't alone. You hate the name. You hate when people call us that. Well, they're idiots. And it is a stupid name. Based economy. I knew there was a reason I liked you. But don't stop there, love. You're on a roll. It's got bad script writing and half the actors look like hostage victims. But I think the people need us. Okay, I wouldn't go that far. There are times among the drudgery and disaster where almost like a Stockholm Syndrome patient, I have occasionally thought I'm quite liking this bit, especially in this episode. Maybe it was just because it was getting cancelled. I could see the end in sight, but I did have quite a lot of fun watching this episode and I'm not sure why. It's possible that the finale broke me. <laughs> But saying we need you is going a little bit far. Do you even care about the people? I don't think the scriptwriters care about the audience, if that's what you mean. No. I wasn't expecting them to tell us that. But Turner did, and I cared about him. Careful, that's almost a nice sentiment to write into a story. Then I guess the best way to keep his memory alive is to keep fighting. I suppose that's one reason to keep the Gotham Knights going. Well, one of us has died. I suppose the rest of us should as well. I don't even like the people I'm saving. I just do it because he did. So they all sign up under the guise of honoring Turner's legacy. Bearing in mind that as far as they think, he's dead because he wanted to pick up some diaries. <laughs> there are more heroic reasons to die than trying to steal somebody's diary. But if that's what you're going to base the Gotham Knights on, I suppose it's a stronger foundation than the start of the series, but Batbrat isn't dead. Instead, he's got promoted to another mansion where he meets the criminal who ran his parents as assassins. So you're my kidnapper. Oh, one might call me your savior. Only if you've got enough money for a second series, mate. My name is Henri Ducat. I don't know why we're not calling you Ra's al Ghul. That's got to be who you are, right? I don't know if there are any other famous groups of assassins in the DC universe. But he says, you've shown great promise. The Court of Owls underestimated you, but I will not. I taught your birth parent, and I taught Bruce Wayne. It's gotta be Ra's al Ghul, surely. I've seen Batman Begins. And now I'll teach you. You tried to kill my adopted father, kidnapped me for away from my friends, and made everyone think I'm dead, and now you want to train me into being an elite killing machine. I'm in. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Just seems like a really bad idea to be training somebody who's already got a chip on their shoulder about you. Everything I know. I'd always hold something back just in case he fights you. That way you're still better than him. Let's face it, he's not going to come up with anything on his own. What about my life in Gotham? You don't have one anymore. Well, that's a bit on the nose, isn't it? <laughs> don't have one anymore. You got cancelled, mate. And my friends? 
Everyone you knew thinks you're dead. You will be as soon as this episode finishes. And that is a perfect place to start. Or stop. Oops. Uh, look, this series went out the same way it went in. Hating Batman. Yeah, we killed Batman off at the start, and then we blew up his tower to destroy his legacy afterwards. The thing was, though, out of every episode, this was the best one. And I think it was the best one because they came more into their own characters. They got their own weapons. We started leading into interesting things. Like, being trained to be an assassin is a cool storyline. Qu my question is, why didn't you start here? If you'd started with this episode, I guarantee you, a lot less viewers would have dropped off. If you'd started with the characters as actual characters, a lot less people would have dropped off. Instead, you decided to start the story, your first series, in the boring bit. Where nobody is anything, they're just a load of boring people wandering around doing nothing for ages. Castiel, once he was allowed to act as Two-Face, was really good. It's just you seem to be saving all of the good bits for the second series. And that's not a plan. Because if nobody watches your first one, you don't get a second series. I'm fed up of shows, but especially superhero shows. Going back, doing origin stories, and starting from where people are useless. Just skip the boring parts of their life and start at the action, where they're already good, where they're already developed. Start your shows with something entertaining, and you might be able to make multiple series out of them. Start them, like Gotham Knights. Well, we found out what happened to that. This show clearly thought it was going to get a second series. They've set everything up, it was building, and it didn't really end properly. They were so sure of themselves. But if you're so sure of getting renewed, then there's no impetus, no driving force for you to make the first one good. You think you've got all the time in the world, and that the viewing audience are just meant to sit through it. Grit their teeth and bear the boredom. That may have worked 25 years ago, when there are only a couple of channels on TV. It does doesn't work now. You've got so much competition for entertainment, respect people's time and entertain them right from the start. Whether the writers actually had the talent to do that or not is a different question, but I do think they set up season two where it could have been interesting if it was made by people who had any talents. It's just a shame that it appears like they kept all the good bits for the next series. Because as it is, with what we actually got, I'm not gonna miss it. And I suppose if there's one advantage of all of this, it's that at least Joker's daughter will get on to do other series because I think she's a genuinely good actress. And her and Castiel were easily the best things about the show. And Granny, but she was only in it for two episodes. But it's interesting, I've never actually finished a review of a series where I knew it got cancelled before my reviews finished. Even she it's like, ooh, will she, won't she? So there's something very final about all this. But you know what? I can guarantee you, I ain't gonna miss it. But those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.